Well, hello there. Good afternoon. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video where I'll be showing you a number of pinhole cameras that I've made over the years, many of which I've shared the details of in the past on the F295 Pinhole Photography Discussion Forum. But I thought it would be a nice idea to show you on video of what the camera, these cameras look like and how they operate, etc. So I'm going to start off right now with a rather interesting camera design that I call a falling plate camera. Um, I didn't invent the falling plate camera. These have been around for well over 100 years. But essentially what it is here is a box camera. It has a uh, simple guillotine style pinhole shutter. The main feature of this camera and why it's called a falling plate camera is it solves the problem of how do you take multiple pictures out in the field without having sheet film holders or plate holders. And the way this camera works it is you load up your sheets of paper or film in the camera beforehand and they are stacked in the back of the camera, a series of them, and by using this knob which slides back and forth, it enables you to, uh, after exposing the front piece of film, film or paper, it allows you to drop it to the bottom of the camera and reveal the next one behind it in the stack. And so you basically have the ability to, to preload this with maybe upwards of a dozen or more plates, if you will. So I'm going to show you the internals of that now. I use these two thumb screws that unscrew. So basically, you have these two threaded rods that protrude through holes in the back. And I'll take it apart here. So the back, again, is, is painted black and it is lined here with uh, adhesive craft felt. What you're going to see in the back is, first of all, there's a sheet of galvanized steel and it's rather heavy. And its only purpose is to sit here and push against these plates. I'm going to take that off. There's a stack of, in this case, eight film plates. And I'm going to tilt it backwards and remove them just momentarily to show you the internals of the camera. So the camera is basically lined with adhesive craft felt and, and the wooden framework sticks are all painted black. Um, the mechanism that I wanted to show you was this sliding mechanism connected to the dowel or connected to the knob. And all it is is it slides back and forth. It is a, an aluminum uh, cylinder, if you will, like a spacer, and it slides back and forth. And the way it works is in the thickness of this top uh, surface of the camera, there's a light trap. There's a piece of wood that slides back and forth connected to this uh, screw and this spacer, and it simply allows it to move without light going through it. And the reason why you have this pin, if you will, protruding down is because the film holders. So in this case, I have eight of them, and I'll pull up one of them here to show you. Um, so these are made of the same thin aluminum flashing material. They've been spray painted flat black, and it has a notch cut in the top a rectangular notch and what you do is I usually, usually use these with paper negatives and I'll cut an 8 by 10 inch sheet of paper into halves that are each 5 by 8 inches and the 5 by 8 inch paper will be placed right here. I'll use a, t a loop of masking tape on the back and just stick the paper negative on the front of this. I have 8 of these available right now and the key feature that makes this usable is if you compare plate holder 2 to plate holder 1, you'll see that the notches um, alternate. The notch for 2 is here, the notch for 1 is here, and they alternate back and forth. So if you look at this entire stack of plate holders, you might want to see that the notches are all staggered. Let me put the first plate back in the camera. So there's just one plate in the camera. Let's assume that the camera was closed up, it was loaded with paper, and I had just taken a shot. What I would do is I would slide that pin forward, and with the camera tilted toward, toward the front, it allows this plate holder to fall to the bottom of the camera. And as you can see, 
the back of the plate holder is exposed, the front of the plate holder that has the light sensitive material is, is not exposed to the pinhole. So it automatically keeps itself uh, protected. And of course that means that the rest of the stack, which is behind that plate holder, is ready to go. So you have shot number two, for instance, which would be taken, then you slide it back and that'll fall. And then you slide it back and then the next one falls. And you slide it back and the next one falls. And etc. etc. until all of the plate holders have fallen. And so that is a falling plate camera. Now there are a few caveats to designing these cameras. First of all, it becomes obvious if you think about it that the height of your film or your plate holder has to be shorter than the focal length of the camera. So you can't have an ultra wide angle very short camera because the play holders wouldn't fall far enough. They might block the pinhole. They wouldn't the camera wouldn't be big enough. So these are more for kind of more normal angles of view, not ultra wide angles of view. The second thing is when you transport this camera loaded with the plate holders you have to be very careful not to upset it tip it backwards or anything like that because you can get the plates dislodged and they won't work anymore. Now this camera has a lip, this flange here that the plates sit on, then there's this quarter inch lip that keeps the bottom of the plates from slipping out and falling into the camera. But still, um, if you jerk it or jar it too much, it, it could jam up the plates. Now I tried to, to design it so that when the plates are in there, the gap between the top of the plate and the, the top of the camera is smaller than this lip here, so it can't possibly jump over. But it's still sometimes, you know, Murphy is always, always, a, is always at work and uh, there's always problems. So this was an experimental design. This was the second of uh, two of them that I built. Uh, that was the falling plate camera. Okay, the second camera I want to show you is kind of a plate camera in a way, but it's not a falling plate camera. Um, it is a little brass box that I made, and the thing about brass when you're, when you're wanting to build a camera is brass, you can solder it. So if you have a soldering iron, you can put it together pretty easy. Anyways, um, it has a little shutter. There's a little metal rod up here connected to an acorn nut as a knob and, it, and it's an internal sliding shutter with a pinhole in there. Um, so there's an access plate on the side of the camera near the back and it just pulls off. The plate is composed of um, a little flange on the outside and then there's a little rectangular framework on the inside of brass and the gap between them is the light trap and that inter interacts or interlocks with the little rectangular square frame here um, to make a light seal. These are uh, these rectangular pieces are K&S engineering. You can get the little brass uh, tubes and square things at the hobby shops and they're all just as you can see rather crudely soldered together. So the camera, the pinhole is, is even about here and the film plane is about here. And what you have, let me pull it out, you have a pusher plate and it's two pieces of brass with a spring connecting in them and they're all soldered together. The corners of these uh, metal plates are cut, are cut off or rounded so they don't hang up. But the purpose of that pusher plate is to simply push against, let me get these out of here, is simply to push against these film plates. And all they are is rectangular little pieces of brass with a loop of masking tape and you stick either um, Freestyle photos, lithography film is really inexpensive, or you can put little squares of uh, paper negatives. But these are two inch by two inch format, and uh, they simply fit in there uh, like that. And then once you put the film on in them, you know, in the dark room, and then you put the little pusher plate, it keeps it pushed up against there, and then you put the lid on. And the whole thing is you're going to use a changing bag to. Uh, change about between shots. But it's a tiny little brass box camera that makes 2 by 2 inch format pictures. Right. Okay, the next camera that I want to show you, I think this is number three. This is what I call a carousel camera. So it is a uh, two level camera. It has a square plan form. Um, it's made from masonite board taped together with gaffer's tape. There are two pinhole shutter mechanisms, one in the top, simple sliding piece of masonite, with a piece of brass and a small pinhole. Um, both of these pinholes I tried to make as close together to the same size as possible so the exposures would be the same. So 
The camera has a knob on top. It's just a piece of wood as a pointer. And there are four positions. One, two, three, four, as you can imagine. Um, and so I'll show you what that does. There's a piece of tape that secures the lid. I'm going to pop the lid off. Setting the camera aside, here's your pointer. And what the pointer is doing is it's turning the, uh, these two little um, machine screws. And those machine screws operate the carousel. They engage in these two holes in the carousel. And what the carousel is made of is sheet galvanized steel. You can buy this at the hardware store. It'll solder together real easy with a soldering iron. It's just like sheet brass will solder together easily with a soldering iron. Those are the two materials that are great for making cameras. Sheet brass and galvanized steel. You spray paint it black. Um, each level of the carousel has four positions. Each position holds a paper negative or a sheet of film um, in a curved film plane fashion. Now I have these pieces of black craft paper in the top that operate as like light baffles so the light from one doesn't fog the edge of the other picture behind it. Um, but you can get an idea just from the shape of those pieces of paper how the curved film plane works. Um, on the bottom of the carousel in the middle is a little cylindrical protrusion that's made of a short piece of metal rod that I solder to it. That acts like an axle for the rotation of the carousel and it engages in the bottom of the camera against a, the hole in the center of a round washer right there. And so when you put the camera together in the dark room, after you load the paper negatives, you're going to want to set the carousel in there and you have to get the center pin engaged in that hole in that washer and you can only really do it by feel. And then the next thing you do is you're going to line up the number one, like here pointing toward me, and you're going to take the lid pointing at number one, okay, and you're going to set the lid partly on and then try to get the holes to line up with these with these uh, pins. And so I set it on and then I have to turn the like that, turn it until the pins engage, and then push the lid down, put the tape on, and now I have my carousel camera loaded. I can go out in the field, I can make eight exposures, four on the top, four on the bottom, and go home and take them out and, and develop them. That's it, that's the carousel camera. Okay, this next camera is a different idea. This was, um, I guess, what I call a grid camera, and it is a homemade wooden box. It's actually one of the nicer pieces of woodworking I've done, even though I'm not really a woodworker. Um, it's a wooden box that has two halves. It's held together by these little brass latches. And it's attached to a piece of black walnut as a base that has the tripod bushing. So I'm going to pull the base off. The base just comes off like that. <clears throat> and so you have this box. And you'll notice these funny little plumbing caps well, what it is, is each one of these plumbing caps is a shutter. And so you have nine different actual separate pinhole compartments. So let me undo the latch and take the camera apart and show you how that works. So you're going to have the camera chamber divided into nine subchambers. And I decided on this particular orientation based on some experimentation I was doing when the idea is you're going to take a single sheet of photo paper such as this and you're going to lay it inside the camera and put the lid on and it'll hold it in place. And that one sheet of photo paper you're going to make nine different exposures. The idea of this would be that the nine different pictures all are related to each other somehow thematically. So together you'll have this composite collage image, if you will, all done in the camera at once. And what the pinholes are, or the pinhole shutter, for instance this one, is just a short piece of copper pipe with a pipe cap. And uh, so these were the um, four different kinds of cameras I wanted to show you today and I would encourage you to uh, maybe consider taking some of these ideas and, and making them your own and Let's see what kind of cameras you can come up with. Very good. This is Joe Van Cleve. Have a good day.